journal entry. <clears throat> I'm starting a online journal, and it is September 15th, 2020. It is a Sunday. So the closest Sunday to that date. I just got done visiting my second family, one of them. In a quarter mile, and turn I am now left going to move Road northeast. the truck. Signs for Silverton. One thing I've been contemplating lately is the Woodward book. I'm listening to his interviews, and I mean intellectually speaking, that stuff is gold. I mean, it's not the most entertaining. But on the same token, it's just, it's absolute gold. Um, the man is extraordinarily thorough. His credentials are outstanding. And I mean, basically what we're running into, wow. You are a driving stereotype. Continue <clears throat> that was Northeast probably, for half a well, mile. this is my own journal entry, so screw it. Um, an <laughs> old Asian lady that almost ran into the front of my car, skipping lanes. That ain't a walking stereotype, I don't know what is. But then again, you go to Walmart, you got people at Walmart left and right. In a quarter mile, turn right onto Hazel Green So I'm listening Road, to Northeast. Woodward, and his analytical process is very defined. In fact, it's, one might even say it's, I mean, he matches basically journalistic perfection, um, in my opinion. And maybe this is just by proxy of what I've been exposed to in my lifetime. Because I believe that um, journalistic integrity has diminished over the years, Continue on Hazel Green and Road is continuing to diminish um, toward the what Piers Morgan was referring to is people want a level of entertainment. You don't just want to hear a story of this person died. You want to hear something that is compelling, and that's why shows like The Newsroom <clears throat> they lay it out very clearly as to what well, they lay out a very structured stance on how news is processed before it reaches your eyes at a news network but when i look at and when i hear bob woodward and uh, just just the amount of information he gathered double confirmation on everything it, it's just it's profound i mean triple confirmation is preferred but double confirmation and just his approach on gathering information, it was fantastic. And that's the type of integrity that I'm trying to show for the VBA, but also the state that I work for, the state of Oregon. I want to make processes better. I want to make every one of our lives better. And yes, I know I threw a um, kind of a, an internal joke on this video relating to um, just stereotypical behavior versus a person enacting that behavior, which we all do. Every single group. I mean, pick a religion, pick a... Like, if there's a stereotype, that means it happens so many times that it becomes common knowledge. That's what a stereotype is. And, of course, common knowledge... Um, I mean, just, just look at any historical document that's been retold. Um, there's definitely political and personal bias in every retelling. Whether it's um, personal acclamation to the dictatorial process, or, it is, or whether it is just a intrinsic um, bias for or against um, X, Y, or Z. So you have these standards, and... Like, I'm totally going to buy Bob Woodward's book. In fact, I'm probably going to go back in time and buy copies of his previous works because that just sounds like an absolutely amazing intellectual read. But fortunately, like the thing that gets me the most is how people without fluency in literary standards or um, journalistic standards, like people with neg negligible um, understanding, choose and elect not to have greater understanding. Now, I completely get the concept, but it's also contradictory to every religion. So, for example, Christians. 
there is a reason that the Bible pretty much all throughout Proverbs, all throughout Ephesians, all throughout um, 1 Corinthians, and a bunch of other books. I mean, pretty much the Bible itself tells us to get rid of the ego, to conquer the ego. And so many people have turned Christianity into a fraternity, or for example, a political um, ideology into a fraternity. I am a Republican, I am a Democrat, I am a Christian. And yet they don't enact the principles of those, of those philosophical indoctrinations that they adhere to, or claim to adhere to. Okay, there's a whole, it's an entirely different spectrum to, to run into a situation where a person walks the walk that they talk. In fact, it's extraordinarily uncommon in the United States of America, and I feel extraordinarily blessed that the people I work with, the people I call friend, the people I call family at this point, like, I'd ride or die 100% with them. And just the, the ideology, some people live up to their ideology and some people don't. And there's a part of me that feels morose. And there's a little bit of consternation um, related to just how people elect to be ignorant. I mean, at this point, with the internet, um, it's not necessarily an option, but at the same time, our ego, when it's on and we don't conquer it, when we don't meditate, when we don't look inside ourselves, figure out how we work, what ends up happening is our ego dominates our lives. And it takes us away from the morals and and the fabrics of morals that we claim to adhere to or that we claim to um, to hold benefit from. Pretty much every religion is massively understood, misunderstood because if there was a singular God, then every religion is just a reinterpretation of the same. And I've got a video that I'm scared to release that video, if I'm being honest. Or not scared. Yeah, I'll say scared. Because of backlash. And of course, that is my ego talking, because the ego is a social self-defense mechanism. It doesn't distinguish between self and self-identity, or self-image. Because self-image reflects directly, um, and I mean directly, not indirectly, in any way, shape, or form, self-image and self-identity until we conquer our ego. Which is why it is the highest aspiration of almost literally every religion in existence. You go through Buddhism, you go through Taoism, you go through Christianity, um, the nation of Islam. I mean, no matter how you spin it, every single religion in all of existence, including Satanism, all speak about conquering your ego, while at the same time adhering to moral fabric and standards. And yes, Satanism does that. Um, or Luciferianism, I'll, I'll say. Because even though it is a, a prescribed ideology of, okay, indulgence, live your life, live your life, live your life, there's still a recognition of the moral fabric of don't kill, don't harm, don't steal. I mean, there are five principal tenets of every single major religion in all of existence, dating all the way back to Enochian. Heaven is unity with God, and that includes the, um, the religion of Gaia, or pretty much any religion. Heaven is unity with God. Hell is separation from God, or separation from nature, separation from creation. Okay, it's true death. Um, there are angels, good spirits, um, ancestors, all of that. Like, there are positive entities. There are negative entities, so demons, jinn, tengu. I mean, pick a culture, pick a religion, pick a time period. They exist, um, or at least according to every major religion. In a quarter Dating mile, back turn to left onto time. Mount Angel Highway Northeast, Old Mount Angel and then Highway five, Northeast. And there are principal tenets by which we should live. The Ten Commandments are the closest approximation of those principal tenets that I have ever read in any major religion because they most accurately reflect all other religions. They're encompassing, um, think of it like the constitution for religions. 
Now, I just I, I find it a truly profound concept to that our egos Continue on dictate Mount Angel, so Highway many of our behaviors. For one mile. I've gone on to um, far right and far left political forums. And the second you disagree with anybody or point out a fact or even ask a question, people begin to insult you. Now, the reason for that is a projection of insecurity. Um, it's basically imposed schadenfreude. Schadenfreude is where... Well, I, I've already explained that in another video. I'm not going to worry about that in my journal. But it's an imposed schadenfreude. And this imposed schadenfreude is basically telling other people, okay, if you don't believe the way that I believe, that makes me feel insecure. Especially when you confront me with facts that I find inconvenient. And I'm going to make you insecure so that you can feel how I feel. In a quarter mile, it's an turn imposed right shot road to where by diminishing that person who we perceive as above us, we bring them down to our level. That's why bullies will take out their their own bullying from parents, from relatives, or, or anything around their Take central the nexus. Right the Hobart Road, They'll take it out on somebody else to make themselves feel superior to somebody else. And it very much reflects on the Alpha Beta Complex, which the Alpha Beta Complex had its purpose. And I think one of the reasons why we're struggling so much culturally as a world is um, too many people, too many betas, are prescribed to the Alpha Beta Complex, which gave birth to Schadenfreude. Because the same way that we perceive threats such as um, a natural fear of snakes or a natural fe fear of spiders, that means somebody survived that enough times that it's ingrained to us to be afraid of that, our ancestors. So it's it's the, um, the equivalency of basically you take a couple different genes, because we have tons and tons of genes. And genes are nothing more right than um, computer road, code northeast. for biology, if we're, if we're getting into it. I mean, we've gotten to the point where we can hack that computer code. Um, we can't exactly write it, but we can hack it. And we're in the process of learning how to write it. The jump DNA, that's basically like the next right all down of down our road, learned northeast. behavior. It's psychological DNA. Because there's a reason we have 12 archetypes, personality archetypes. There's a reason we have 12 convert. Like 9, 12, I mean, 9 guaranteed. North on Mount Angel 12, Highway Northeast, yeah, Old Mount Angel Highway Northeast, when you start going into the 15s Hook and Northeast. the, um, I think, 18s or 19s, that's when it's just some psychologist reaching because they they don't have control of their own ego. They're like, oh my gosh, I want to be special. I want to feel special. I want people to recognize me for something significant. I want to be an alpha or pseudo-alpha. In a quarter mile, and turn right alphas on the road are recognized. northeast. Like, alphas are, are natural leaders, natural independence. Um, I am an omega personality type, which puts me into the bracket of alphas, but it also puts me in the bracket to where I can be beaten down to act like a beta. That's the uh, beta's the prerogative. Right the east. more people that they can put underneath them, the more their status raises as a pseudo-alpha. Because betas, like the people that argue with you online, Head they're not on alphas Mount in Angel English Highway or Northeast. Old Mount because, Angel Highway Northeast. to quote one of my favorite phrases, lions don't concern themselves with the opinions of sheep. That's exactly what it is, is alphas are lions, and betas are sheep. Or at least that's a good approximation for how we as a species view the alpha beta complex. But our culture has evolved beyond that. Alpha beta complex, that was great for kings, queens, monarchs, dictators, all that good stuff. And some people are very, very happy to be betas. But then you got everybody else who, just our society, to be able to function at the scale that it functions. We have to have more than just the alpha beta complex, but our genetics haven't caught up yet because our culture and our technology and our interconnectedness has grown at an ungodly pace. And when I say ungodly, what I mean by that is our genetics, nature, 1, cannot feet. keep Turn up. Turn right onto East Church Street. Now, we do have remedies, and I think that's where, um, where the Bi books like the Bible and the Quran 
and um, the Seven Pillars, I believe. Um, it's, it's been too many years since I read that. But all of those documents portray the same concept of conquering your ego and not being a slave to it. Unfortunately, there are a lot of people that seem to enjoy being slaves to their ego, and that's that's both a scary concept um, if anybody has power within that bracket, which Trump does. And that's why so many psychologists are saying, holy crap, why is nobody doing something? Because psychologists can call it out, but you have to have military in action or um, congressional and senate action. But the Senate right now is just completely flooded with betas. I mean, Mitch McConnell, straight up beta. Okay, um, Lindsey Graham, he's a beta. And it kind of breaks my heart because he was a beta that stood for something at one point. And then he just sold himself out. He saw other people get rich and he decided, you know what? I'm getting on this bandwagon. At least that's, that's the external perception that I have of him. It's just, it's an outstanding and amazing concept to look at humanity and its denial of what we are, how we operate, and just to see so many people embrace the concept of the ego and schadenfreude, to see so many people debase themselves by trying to diminish um, other people just so that they can feel better about themselves. And it's, it's such lowbrow behavior, and one thing that I can't wrap my head around, but it may also just be my nature, is I like being an intellect. I like evaluating everything that happens. I can't make a slice of bread and butter it without looking at how I butter that bread. Did I melt, did I slightly um, soften the butter, or do I just apply it granular? I, I, I analyze every second of every day from a psychological perspective, including making this journal. And it's a wonderful experience, but at the same time, it's it's a bit of a depressing experience because I'm not being allowed to have faith in humanity. I'm allowed to have faith in human beings, but humanity in and of itself is self-destructive. I mean, life is consumption. If you take it down to a base level, life is the ability to consume and to propagate. I just, I wish, I truly wish other people would start having some heart. So they would get out of the traumas that cause them to extend those traumas to other people and project them and to try and forcibly bring other people down to make themselves feel better. I wish that we would grow up as a species and recognize, and some of us have, but so many of us haven't. And the prerogative of a beta is to collect and hoard power. And power can be interpreted as social influence or as money, but that's the prerogative of a beta, to half a mile, build and accumulate power, road northeast. influence, the ability to get something done. And unfortunately, the people who have accumulated power in the past have often done so by cheating. Like, there are two different branches of um, the beta complex. You have the, um, you have the ones that the next left respect onto hard work road northeast, then turn and right onto dislike North their station um, subserviently. Well, I guess there's a third one where some are very happy to be subservient. In fact, I'm an Omega that likes to be subservient to some degree. I like to serve my fellow man, but I don't like taking orders from my fellow man. That's more of an Omega standpoint than a lot of things I've heard. Take the next right onto North Second Street, then turn I just right wish onto Castle Macor. Would be better as a species and more conscientious. But understanding psychology and the way the human mind works, the way I to the level and degree that I do, I know it's never going to happen. And that's kind of depressing a little bit. Take the next right on Castle Brook Court, then your destination will be on the right. I'm almost at my destination. Um, 19 minutes and 55 seconds. I'm cutting it off.